What's up guys, it's Techie Chris and I'm back here with another video. Today, my plan is to take you guys with me on a day in the life as a network engineer. I've already freshened up at the moment and it's right now, it's about 7 a.m. Um, I'm about to head to work. So I am just gonna take you guys with me on my day, show you guys what I kind of do as a network engineer. So here is my outfit today. This is what I'll be wearing to work. So yeah, now I'm just walking to my car. All right guys, so I just got inside the car. Now I'm about to head to work. It is about a 30, maybe 30, 25 to 30 minute commute. So um, I'm about to head to work now. I'll catch you guys when I get to the office. I'm hoping that today should be a good day, but you know, you gotta take it, everything with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm kind of excited to record this day in the life, but. So I finally just made it, um, finally made it to the office, walking to, to go through security and then from security, go to my floors. So in the elevator going up to my floor, um, very excited for the day. I have a couple of things planned for work today. I have a couple of projects that I'm working on and a couple of things to do. So excited to take you guys along with me and show you guys what I kind of do throughout the day. So just got to office. So to start my day, I usually start off by writing down my to-do list of things that I need to do and things that I need to accomplish for today, and not only for today, but for the week. This helps me keep all my thoughts together and really just stay organized so I make sure I tackle everything that I need to do. So at this point, I'm pretty much finished writing my to-do list and I kind of have a good idea of everything that I need to do for today. So the next step of my day usually would consist of me just looking through my emails, looking through my messages and making sure I didn't miss anything. During this time, I usually also will respond to tickets that were escalated to the network engineering team. And I also will check on any outages that seem to have occurred during the night. This is really like my catch up period where I make sure I didn't miss anything that was super important. So after I do that, I go ahead and put my change controls in for the week. This week I have a couple change controls cause I'm on a couple projects. So let's go ahead and put them change controls in. A change control is pretty much any time that you are making a change in your environment and you need approval from your change advisory board. Every organization is different, but change control meetings are usually held at the beginning of the month and everybody gets to speak about what they specifically are doing during this week. For me, my changes will consist of some configurations that will be going on for some SD-WAN routers in our environment. I also will be working on some QoS updates inside of our environment. And I do plan to get started on a wireless project this week. So I will be mentioning all of that inside of our change control meeting this week. Here's a quick fit check, by the way. You guys wanted to see what the fit looks like today. Here's the fit. And I'm sure I speak for all my people in tech, but a nice cup of coffee goes a long way. So I'm in the server room. I just submitted the changes that need to be made for the week. Um, I have some work I need to do in the server room. We have some recabling that needs to be done for our SD-WAN routers. Basically what is happening is that right now, the way that it is set up, each router has their own connection that goes straight to their own separate DIA circuit. Well, that's fine. Um, traffic and applications are usually low balance between those two routers. So what happens is sometimes those applications don't like being low balance and they have issues. So the goal today is to bring a connection between those two routers. So basically right now, each router has one connection to the DIA circuit. So we're gonna make it a dual connection so the routers will be able to have a connection to both DIA circuits. So yeah, once we recable it, we're gonna to have to go into the switch and make some configuration changes on the switch because right now the switch is gonna see them as separate DIA connections, but we have to make sure that we specify on the switch inside the descriptions that there's a T-lock connection between those two routers and just have to make some configuration changes. But yeah, that's kind of what I have for today. Also going to be working on a server remover. The systems engineering team uh, wasn't able to come down on site. So we're going to be helping them remove a server later on today. So that's kind of what we have on the docket for today. 
So from about 10 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m., this is where I pretty much have all of my major meetings. During this time, I have the route switch meeting, I have the change control meeting, and my lease swap meeting. So now that my early morning meetings are over, I am back in the server room and I'm going to go ahead and pre-configure the ports that need to be changed for this router recabling. So we got a couple SFPs, about to go ahead and throw these on the end of the ethernet connectors and put these into the correct expansion ports for the switch. So basically right here, I'm just going through the process of recabling the connection between the switch and the router. So if you didn't understand before, the routers currently have a connection to one DIA circuit. So with this change right here that I am doing, the routers are going to pretty much have access to both DIA circuits. And if you don't know what DIA stands for, DIA stands for Dedicated Internet Access and pretty much is our connection to the ISP. ISP stands for Internet Service Provider and some of the more popular internet service providers are Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and some of those other big names. So really quick, what I'm about to do is add an extension to our cellular failover device. The current device already has antennas, but the antennas tend to be blocked by the other network infrastructure. So the plan here is to put this extension so we can add this antenna to the top of the rack. Adding this antenna to the top of the rack will help the connection stay better when we have to use this device for a cellular failover. So now we have the SD-WAN riders cabled and completely configured. Now what I'm about to do is I have the server right here that needs to be taken out so i'm about to just take out the server disconnect it and remove the port channels and remove all the configurations that go to this server from the switch so that's what i'm about to tackle right now so as i mentioned right now i am trying to take this server off of the network um servers being decommissioned so you have to get this thing off of the network um right now as you see you gotta take pretty much all of the cables off to make this happen so let's go ahead and do that so a lot, after a lot of hard work and a lot of strength and elbow grease i finally got the server out um that's the server right there that was that was rough but now i got all these cables and stuff that came from that server um what i'm going to do now is go into the switch and from the switch, I'm going to delete all of the server commands that were once part of the server and just take those off of the switch pretty much and clean everything up in here. And that'll pretty much wrap up my day for today. So back at my desk, pretty much we'll finish off the day doing configurations for pretty much everything that I just touched. So guys, I'm heading back home to finish off the rest of my day. Grab some aimless cookies from the office, but that is pretty much my office day for today. I'm gonna go home and finish a couple of things at home, but that is pretty much it. It's about four o'clock right now, so I'm gonna go head home now. What's up guys, Chris back here. So that was pretty much my day as a network engineer um, in office. Uh, like I said, I had a couple of things to do today and um, I was able to successfully finish pretty much most of my tasks. Uh, right now it's about 8 p.m. Um, at night. I just got back from the gym. So um, right now I'm just kind of decompressing. Really hungry right now, so probably gonna go grab some food. Um, but yeah, that's how my day went as a network engineer. Not all engineers are gonna have the same exact kind of day that I had. Sometimes you guys are gonna have a lot more work to do throughout the day. Sometimes you're going to have a lot less work to do throughout the day. This was kind of that middle ground where I was in that server room for the majority of the day after my meetings, making sure I handled my projects and um, fulfilled all the enhancements that I needed to fulfill. But that is pretty much like a day as a network engineer. Um, like I said, the days vary, but this is just to give you guys a good representation of what you might expect to do as a network engineer. Um, anyways, I really do appreciate you guys for watching and staying to the end of the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please drop me a subscribe. We just hit 2000 subscribers, so I do appreciate.